Okay, here's the second video for lesson 4.2. So if you haven't watched the first one yet, make sure you go back and watch that one. I'm just talking about what it means when things are congruent, how you apply algebra. Now we have a couple theorems. There's two theorems, and then we're gonna do a proof, um, not totally related to these two theorems, but a proof dealing with the idea of congruent figures. All right, so first theorem is theorem 4.3. It's called the third angles theorem. We're gonna give this one two stars. We don't use it a lot. All right, but we use it often enough that it's going to be helpful. All right? Third angles theorem is not complicated. It says if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in a second triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. Okay, so let me let me draw a picture of that so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I'm just going to kind of put it over here in this little section. All right, so if I show you a triangle that looks like this, okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And then I show you another triangle that also has those same marks. Okay, now, some of you might say, well, that's a right angle. Well, we don't know that for sure. It kind of looks like they might be, but we don't know that for sure, so that we can't, we can't assume that. All right, but what we do know is that that angle and that angle are congruent to that angle and that angle. Now, we know that all three angles add to equal 180. And here, all three angles add to equal 180. Well, if you take two numbers and add them together, whatever they might be, and then subtract from 180, that would give you this answer. Well, up here you would be taking the same exact two numbers, adding them together, which should give you the same exact answer you got down here when you added them together, and then subtract from 180 again. And guess what? You're going to get the same exact answer. And that's basically what our proof looks like. It says, hey, triangle sum theorem, all of these add to equal 180. So do all of these. These are the same. So are these. So if I add here or add here, I get the same answer. And when I add them together and subtract from 180, it gives me the same answer here and here. So if these two angles are congruent to these two angles, then automatically this angle, I'll put three marks on it, is going to be congruent to this angle as well. That's what the third angle theorem is saying. All right, we're going to use that in just a little bit. Okay, next, theorem 4.4 called properties of congruent triangles properties of congruent triangles. You guys remember these properties that we talked about in a previous chapter, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive? If not, you need to review them because they're showing up again. So reflexive, remember this is very important. We use this a lot, so it's three stars. Symmetric we don't use very often. Transitive we use a lot. Now we aren't going to use them a lot for triangles. We use them more for segments and for angles, but all this theorem 4.4 says is that these three properties work for triangles. Okay, we started with having these properties for equality. Then we moved to, hey, there's a theorem that says these properties work for congruent segments. And another theorem says they work for congruent angles. And now we have a theorem that says they work for congruent triangles as well. So let's review reflexive. That means a triangle is always congruent to itself. All right, congruent to itself. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. You cannot change the order. Okay, remember order of triangles is important. We talked about that in the first video for lesson 4.2. Okay, symmetric. If triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, then, remember symmetric meant we could flip the order around. So triangle DEF, notice we're not flipping the order of the triangle. We're just flipping the left and right side of the congruent sign. Triangle ABC. Transitive has the idea of skipping something. So if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and triangle DEF, notice it's the same, is congruent to triangle GHI, then what? Well, we skip the thing in the middle. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GHI. Now we could go back and ask you questions like we did in that first video, like, Segment AC is congruent to what? Well, I could move up here and say segment AC is congruent to segment DF. Or down here I could say segment AC is congruent to segment GI. Both of those would be correct answers. All right? Or I could ask you about angle B is congruent to what? Well, angle B is congruent to angle E. 
And down here, angle B is congruent to angle H. They're in the same position. All right, so those are the two theorems that are in lesson 4.2. The last thing we have is we have a proof. Okay, so I want you to copy this picture down. We are going to prove triangles are congruent using the definition of congruent figures. So here's your picture. You need to get it copied down. Then we're going to prove that these triangles are congruent. All right. Copy that down. Get your statements reasons column set up. We haven't done this in a little while. Okay, but we're going to do a full proof on this one. So number one, we actually have a lot of givens on this one. All these marks are givens. Okay, so we're going to start with this. I'm just going to start with the side. So ZW is congruent to XY. And that's a given. And ZX is congruent to WY. And that's also a given. Now, some people might put all four of these things in the very first line and just write given for all of them. I like to separate them out. You'll learn more about why I like to separate them out as we move into some later lessons. All right. um, what else do we know? Well, we know this angle is congruent to that angle. Now, I can't just say angle W because that's confusing. There's a bunch. There's this angle W. There's that angle W. There's this really big angle W. So remember, we have to use three letters. So angle YWX, YWX, that's this one up here, is congruent to this one down here, ZXW. Congruent to angle ZXW. Once again, that's a given because of the marks. All right, and this angle, angle ZWX, is congruent to angle YXW. All right, now, you guys remember what the definition of congruent triangle said? Sorry, those are off the screen there briefly. But let me grab that other sheet of paper when we talked about at the very beginning, uh, 4.2, okay? All sets of sides are congruent. All sets of angles are congruent. That was the important thing there. Okay, so let's look at this. Do we have all sets of sides? Well, I have one set and two sets. Well, I should have how many sets? I should have three. All right, so what side are we missing on this triangle? Well, we're missing side WX. Okay, let's write it down. WX is congruent to... Okay, over on this triangle, which side am I missing? Well, I'm missing WX again, right? Okay. So WX on one of the triangles, and then also WX on the other. Why would WX be congruent to WX? We should know that. We just talked about it. The reflexive property of congruence. Okay, remember we said that's three stars. We use it a lot, so we just used it. Okay, now I have all three sets of sides that are congruent. How many angles do I have? Well, let's get rid of that so it doesn't look like anything important there. I have one set of angles. I have a second set of angles. What about those two? They're not vertical angles. can't use that. They're not alternate interior. There's no parallel lines anyway, so I can't use any of that. Well, there actually might be parallel lines if I went alternate interior angle converse, but that still doesn't help me with these because they don't touch the same transversal. Hey, wait, we just learned about this theorem, right? Let's take a look back. What was that theorem? If two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in a second triangle, two angles are congruent to two angles then the third angles are also congruent. Well, there we go. The third angles are also congruent. Now, I can say this angle by just saying angle Z. Remember, we couldn't say this just by saying angle W. It was too confusing. But if I say angle Z, everybody knows exactly which angle I'm talking about. So angle Z is congruent to angle Y. And our reason is the third angles theorem. Now, are the triangles congruent? We have one set, two set, three sets of sides. One set, two sets, three sets of angles. That's our definition. So, triangle. All right, let's just name this triangle ZWX. Now, remember, order is important. So, if I put Z first, 
it actually doesn't have any marks on it. If I put some marks on it, I already used one and two, so I have to put three. Well, that would match up with Y over here. So since Z came first, I gotta put Y first. W came second, it has two marks on it. So I look over at this triangle, which one has two marks on it? This one down here, X. And then X was last, it has one mark, so the one mark, the W in this case, has to come last. Why are the triangles congruent? Definition of congruent, we could say congruent figures, or I'm just gonna say congruent triangles. All right. Definition of congruent triangles, three sets of congruent sides, three sets of congruent angles. Now, this proof is long, it's seven steps. Good news is, in a little bit, we're gonna learn some shortcuts that's gonna shorten this down to four steps. Okay, we'll go from seven down to four, that'll make our life a lot easier. Cut our work about in half. That's it for lesson two. Make sure you watch both videos, and we'll see you guys in class with questions.